Hi, and welcome to Discover Oklahoma. I'm Jennifer Reynolds. And I'm Dean O'Lolly. Today we're blasting off, so to speak, from the Stafford Air and Space Museum in Weatherford. About an hour west of Oklahoma City on I-40, and we love making this drive because mm -hmm. Dino and I, we're kind of aviation geeks, and we adore this museum. From the Wright Brothers to modern day NASA, including a brand new full size replicas of the X 10 that broke the sound barrier and the Apollo Command module, the Stafford Museum has the story of air and space covered. We'll have more about how you can plan your visit here coming up a little bit later in the show. But first, a rare treat in the heart of our state. The Oklahoma City Museum of Art has an exhibit on display that's only visiting two cities in the entire United States. Our Quinn Tran takes us to quilts and colors. From a distance, they look like modern works of art. And you wonder, what was the artist thinking? Uh, did they have the design in their head when they started? Or did they, was it trial and error to put these colors together and these designs together? Look closely, what appears to be a painting is really a handmade quilt. It's so diverse and you've got so many um, amazing things coming at you and you can stand in front of one and see so many different things. We're, we're used to abstract art, but you think 1700, 1800, you wouldn't think of abstract art as, as being a part of their lifestyle. Many of these quilts are more than a century old. All were handmade. They're part of the Oklahoma City Museum of Art special exhibition called Quilts in Color. Each of these quilts have a story. They do have a story and a lot of these stories we know but some of them we don't know because unlike paintings a lot of women didn't sign their quilts. Um, so unfortunately a lot of these are anonymous and we don't know who quilted them but just you know the talent that went into them it kind of tells a story itself. Three sisters made this quilt in 1870, a gift from a father to his daughter on her wedding day. This one has a very balanced feel to it. Catherine Shodick is the assistant curator of exhibitions. She says the 45 quilts featured are on loan from the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston. They were part of the quilt collection of Gerald Roy and Paul Pilgrim. Over the years, the collectors discovered these quilts that were made by American women between 1840 and 1940. The women were artists before their time, stitching creative designs and color combinations. These women had an innate understanding. They didn't have formal training in color theory or um, you know, color relationships. They chose their fabric and their colors just as a painter would choose his oils and his brushes or a, a sculptor would choose his chisel and you know, stone. So I viewed these women as fine artists even though when they were creating them at the time, they were not seen as that. Today, those early quilters are celebrated at the Oklahoma City Museum of Art. The pieces illustrate that quilting is more than a craft. These are works of fine art. In Oklahoma City, Quintran, Discover Oklahoma. Quilts and colors will be on display at the Oklahoma City Museum of Art until February 7th. If you call ahead for reservations, the museum can accommodate group tours. Check the museum website, okcmoa.com, for hours and admission costs. And on display all year round are beautiful state parks. You know, in winter time is really a very, very fun Hello. time to mm -hmm. curl up in a cozy cabin and just have some downtime. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, at Hugo Lake State Park. Like so many of the state parks in Oklahoma, Hugo Lake State Park is a local gem. It's here where you can find tranquility. Just about everybody that's, that's come here has enjoyed the peace and quiet. Uh, they think that the, uh, the cabins are quite nice uh, and just, they're just, they enjoy their stay here. As you look around, it's almost as if this is a sanctuary for outdoor beauty, a place to get away from it all and just be lazy, much like these leaves on the picnic bench. Just taking it easy. It really is peaceful when you come here, uh, quiet time, uh, just to get away from the city and relax. 
There's something about having respect for the environment and just the peace and quiet of being out with the trees and the leaves, the sun and fresh air. But Hugo Lake State Park does offer a variety of accommodations. We offer uh, uh, 16 and two bedrooms, fully furnished cabins. Uh, then we have 10 of the primitive cabins uh, that are just one bedroom. Uh, seven of them have bathrooms on the inside, and 10 of them, or three of them do not. There's also something a little extra. The community building is a four bedroom, uh, three baths upstairs, uh, meeting room downstairs, uh, full, fully functional kitchen and living area. And uh, we've rented a lot for weddings, uh, also for uh, family reunions and uh, uh, various events that happens during the, during the, uh, the year. The park offers a smorgasbord of outdoor recreational opportunities, including hiking, nature study, and backpacking. And you can fish the lake for bass, catfish, and crappie. And don't forget about their very nice marina. The marina is, it has 56 slips, uh, a fully functional uh, marina store that offers snacks, uh, beverages, uh, full service gasoline, and uh, we're, we're real proud of our, our marina. Park manager Ron Reese is also proud of the park in general. He's been here since 1997. I have. It's just, it's one of my favorite places to be. Uh, I take very good ownership in being part of it, and I am so proud to, to be here and be part of it. If you're ready to get outdoors and explore Oklahoma this year, you need a copy of the new 2016 Outdoor Guide. We are happy to send you one free of charge. Just go to TravelOK.com and click on Request Free Brochures. You can also stop and pick up a copy at any of our state's travel information centers. Coming up on Discover Oklahoma. It's just this old school place and it's got a lot of charm, southern charm. A hot spot for brunch in Oklahoma, where to find it and what you've just got to order. We are a hidden treasure. And discovering the story behind a little known spot in southeastern Oklahoma. My dad used to tell everybody they have, they have an addictive ingredient, but you gotta go get your lot of burger fix. Plus the burger joint some Oklahomans say they are downright addicted to. It's all ahead right here on Discover Oklahoma. Great travel tips anytime, like Discover Oklahoma on Facebook and follow us on Instagram and Twitter. As the weather cools and the leaves begin to fall, don't trade outdoor recreation for winter hibernation. Discover the off-season treasures available at Oklahoma's 34 great state parks. Wide open trails teeming with wildlife, fishing, fun festivals, bird watching, equestrian trails, nature center activities, and cozy cabins with fireplaces offer the perfect escape for a wintry getaway. Visit TravelOK.com for special offers and come see for yourself. Oklahoma's new 2016 Outdoor Guide is full of the state's most spectacular activities and destinations. And when you use our new mobile app, some of the pages spring to life. So find your Oklahoma state of mind. Order your free guide at TravelOK.com today. Welcome back to the Stafford Air and Space Museum out in Weatherford where we are surrounded by the most extraordinary air and space artifacts. And it's one of those places you can come back occasionally and find new exhibits. Something always new. All the time. But if you do want to be surrounded by food, mm -hmm. and who doesn't, yeah. look no further than a place that's been feeding hungry folks for over 20 years. Jason Grubb is going to introduce us to a place called the Wild Fort. Utica Square is one of those special places that is unique to Tulsa and unique to the state of Oklahoma. And just as special is a little restaurant in the heart of it all, called the Wild Fork. I hope that when they walk in the door, they feel like they're welcome. It's just this old school place, and it's got a lot of charm, southern charm. The moment you're welcomed by that southern charm, you can smell the delicious aroma coming from the kitchen. There you go, chef. We like to have good quality food. We aren't too fruity, but we like to use our skills Co-owners Kim Mickey and Julie Woolman say those skills are used on everything from soups, salads, and sandwiches. Favorite thing is the Moroccan chicken sandwich, the salmon salad, the swordfish, any of their fish dishes. 
to the fresh fish. The salmon, you can't beat it. I don't care what form, fashion, or variety you want. Chicken fried steak covered in tasty gravy. It's one of my favorites. I know, that is one of my favorites. And I've managed to eat one of those before too. I mean, it's huge, it's as big as your head. I would put ours up against most. Kim says Julie is queen of vitamin G around here. <laughs> vitamin G, that's, that would be gravy. The Wild Fork is open not only for lunch and dinner, but breakfast as well. You'll find a lot on the menu to choose from. That's where I definitely come more often is for the breakfast, and they are wonderful. The omelets are great. Um, the bananas, those are just as good. Wonderful, as a matter of fact. No matter what time you're eating, Kim says her crew is always creating interesting styles of food using only the best ingredients. It's Oklahoma product when it can be, and we're just we're proud of it every day, and we work hard every day at it. The specials and soups vary from day to day. It depends on the shipments. Everything in, is made in-house, so you don't know what we're going to do until we know what's coming in the back door. Something that's also changing are the paintings. About every eight weeks, you'll see two to three new artists. The works are accented by the whimsical lighting, zebra carpet, and colorful walls. We're all about just having kind of a, an eclectic look. And it really lends itself to uh, lunches with friends, with business uh, acquaintances. It also has a great space for families to come and eat. The look, feel, and taste of the food is what has kept people coming back since 1995, when the Wild Fork opened for business. Since then, it's become a staple of Tulsa restaurants. It's a special place. It's, it, you have the beauty of Utica Square around in the, in the open area there, as well as amazing art. Kim and Julie say it's not just atmosphere and good food that make the Wild Fork a success, it's also their customers, both loyal regulars and newcomers. Glad you found us. <laughs> Come on back. <laughs> and that's the job. You give them one time, you got to get them back the second time. In Tulsa's Utica Square, I'm Jason Grubbs for Discover Oklahoma. To find out more about places like the Wild Fork, head to our website, TravelOK.com, and click up at the top where it says Dining, and you can search for Oklahoma restaurants by city or region. I grew up eating a double meat cheese with everything on it, and it, to me, that's true lot of burger. And there's more good food coming up. We're showing you the spot famous for its burgers, and you won't believe which Hollywood star loved this place when he was in town. We displayed and research and, and, and work with the material culture of peoples all over the world. Plus the Hidden Oklahoma Museum with artifacts from all over the world. It's all ahead when Discover Oklahoma continues. Oklahoma Today magazine brings you stunning photography and authentic award-winning stories of home from Oklahoma. The only magazine that covers the entire state, Oklahoma Today showcases what we love about Oklahoma, bringing to you the very best of its people, places, culture, history, and of course, its legendary food. Subscribe now at oklahomatoday.com and get six issues absolutely free. Don't miss a single issue of Oklahoma Today magazine. It's mind-boggling to go through the history of, of music and, and the connection to Oklahoma. Oklahoma's Rhythm and Roots website is shaking the walls with legendary talent, iconic venues, and vocals from the heartland. Full of photos, videos, music, trivia, and itineraries, Rhythm and Roots transforms Oklahoma's rich music legacy into a bucket list of travel opportunities. Tune in to OklahomaMusicTrail.com and start your journey today. Welcome back to the Stafford Air and Space Museum in Weatherford, a drive Dino and I never mind making because everything here from NASA to the earliest days of flight you will find in this terrific museum. And fortunately, it's just one of many great museums in our state. And speaking of museums, our next stop, we're actually going to a museum. And from here in Weatherford, it's a little bit of a drive, but that's okay. We're going to a place called the Museum of the Red River. It is in Idabel, but Darren Brown is going to show us no matter where you are in the state, it is worth the drive. We are a hidden treasure. Um, we're a 40,000 square foot facility with fantastic collections, numbering over 30,000 objects, uh, which are, um, can easily be counted among the best of their kind across the country. Opened in 1975, the Museum of the Red River is a true Oklahoma original. 
Here you can take a global peek into other cultures. We display and research and, and, and work with the material culture of peoples all over the world. And so we will have things from five continents um, and rep things from the earliest uh, human interaction. We have, we have objects that date back 10,000 years to contemporary. And in the contemporary spirit, the museum is celebrating its 40th birthday in a big way. We're going to add about a total of 8,000 square feet throughout the building. Um, we're renovating individual spaces uh, in addition to adding on a, basically a whole new front, which will be the lobby and the museum store and a new classroom. Um, our collections, currently numbering about 30,000 objects, are, uh, are in storage that we basically, uh, we're about 95% capacity. The museum's new $4 million expansion project, set to happen very soon, will at least double their storage space and increase the exhibit space in the other areas. Pretty soon, more of this stuff will be out here where you and I can see it. Keep in mind, though, there's plenty of cool stuff to see right now. Okay, now, Henry, uh, I was looking earlier at this little tab says beer fermenting vessel. Right. That's a lot of, that's a lot of alcohol right uh, that's there. A, that is a lot of alcohol. Um, actually, there are several hundred gallons represented in these two jars. What are these from? Uh, these are from, uh, well, these are made by the Shipibo Indians uh, who live on the east side of the Andes in Peru. Now, this is, it, the, the sign says archaeological study collections, and mm -hmm. you told me earlier, the oldest item uh, in this museum is right in this it drawer. It will be in this drawer. In this drawer. <laughs> This is a Clovis point, which is among the earliest tools that, are, uh, that, that have ever been found in North America. So this is between 10 and 12,000 years old. It was found in Oklahoma. That's just amazing to think that, you know, mm -hmm. uh, it, right, it's right there, right? 10,000 <laughs> years, right there, right there. The museum was also home to the state dinosaur, Acrocanthosaurus atokensis. Bet you can't say that fast three times. Back in the early 80s, our buddy Acro was found just about 20 miles down the road. It was local school kids who got him displayed here. They were challenged to raise $50,000. And those kids did not raise $50,000. They raised $150,000. And so we were sort of called on it. And so we spent the other $500,000 to build the building and acquire a cast because the original fossil was, was not available to us. But that was also the catalyst that took us from a regional museum to an international museum. At 40 years old, this museum is just getting its second wind. This new expansion will help it promote the future while preserving its past. In Idabel, discovering Oklahoma, I'm Darren Brown. We hope your family will plan a road trip to a great location like the Museum of the Red River in Idabel this year. This guide's gonna help you do it. Pick up your free copy of the brand new 2016 Oklahoma Travel Guide at any travel information center, or just order one sent straight to your house, free of charge. Just go to our website, travelok.com, and click where it says Request Free Brochure. I have a lot of burger on the speed dial, so that is a testament to tell you how much I love coming to this place. Up next, a trip to one of the tastiest burger joints in the state. We're road tripping for a good meal next right here on Discover Oklahoma. Oklahoma's new 2016 travel guide is your ticket to the state's most exciting places, attractions, and activities. Loaded with great ideas from cover to cover. Don't wait to order. Get your free 2016 Oklahoma travel guide online at TravelOK.com today. As the weather cools and the leaves begin to fall, don't trade outdoor recreation for winter hibernation. Discover the off-season treasures available at Oklahoma's 34 great state parks. Wide open trails teeming with wildlife, fishing, fun festivals, bird watching, equestrian trails, nature center activities, and cozy cabins with fireplaces offer the perfect escape for a wintry getaway. Visit TravelOK.com for special offers and come see for yourself. down the plane and the waving wheat can sure smell sweet when the wind comes <laughs> right behind the wind Oklahoma every night my honey lays a night sit alone and talk and watch our hawk making lazy circles in the sky <laughs> we know we belong to the land and the land we belong to is grand and when we say <laughs> We're only saying you're doing fine. Oklahoma. 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 Hey. Oklahoma. 
Oklahoma, come see for yourself. You forgot the honey lamb? <laughs> Well, if you need your space, we've got it for you. We're here at the Air and Space Museum out in Weatherford that's named for a famous astronaut, Tom Stafford. And with that, you know, a lot of famous folks do make their way to Oklahoma right. at one point or another. And with that, we're going to take you to a burger shop in Bartlesville that George Clooney frequented when he was here making the movie August Osage County. Julie Chin checks out a lot of burgers. Grew up in Bartlesville, so this is a staple in Bartlesville. When it comes to finding the best burger in Bartlesville, you could say Lotta Burger has that in the bag. The locals voted this burger the best more than a dozen years. Because it tastes better. I have a lot of burger on the speed dial, so that is a testament to tell you how much I love coming to this place. Step up to the counter, order off the menu, or customize your choice. Every order is made fresh with fresh ingredients. And it's made fresh. We, we buy the meat. The meat's not frozen. It, we have it delivered almost every day. The same with the produce that we use and everything. We also try to stay local, so the beef that we get is should be Oklahoma grown or at least locally grown. It may have some, some bleed overs. And I think that's what's made us famous as far as the taste goes. Johnny's dad and uncles cooked up the first Oklahoma Lotta Burgers in the 50s, opening casual made to order burger spots from Tulsa to Bartlesville, Ponca City to Enid. I grew up eating a double meat cheese with everything on it. And it, to me, that's true Lotta Burger. When this Lotta Burger opened in 1959, they only sold hamburgers and cheeseburgers. They've expanded their menu a little bit now and offer chicken and chili pie and salads, but by far the top seller is still the burger. We build it a certain way. We have the, the we, we toast the buns and we put just a very thin layer of mustard on there. We use some pickles that, that, that starts and then we put the, the lettuce on top of that and then we put the tomatoes and then we end up with onions on the top. When the hit, hot meat hits the vegetables, it causes them all to kind of melt together. Pair it with a cold pop and crispy fries and you'll see why Lotta Burger is getting a lot of love. It is a flavor that brings them back time and time again. They, they, my dad used to tell everybody they have, they have an addictive ingredient, but you got to go get your lot of burger fix. You should try it because it's a lot better than the other places. I love to come here. It's a great burger joint. In Bartlesville, I'm Julie Chin, Discovering Oklahoma. Now, if you go, keep in mind, a lot of burger isn't open on Sundays, and they close at 7 during the week and 8 on Saturday. We want to say a titan size thank you to the folks here at the Stafford Air and Space Museum in Weatherford. A reminder, they're open seven days a week, nine to five, Monday through Saturday, one to five on Sunday. Admission is $7 for adults, $5 for those 55 and older, and there's always a military discount as well. You can find out more about the museum at the website, staffordmuseum.com. And coming up next Saturday on Discover Oklahoma, down home cooking right in the heart of central Oklahoma. We'll visit the place that is packing them in every day for lunch and dinner. And a cozy cabin for two. How's that for a Valentine's Day getaway? We'll show you where it is next Saturday night right here on Discover Oklahoma. So until next time, remember. There's always something to discover in Oklahoma. Our intrepid Ford Explorer is provided by the Oklahoma Ford Dealers, official partner of the Oklahoma Tourism and Recreation Department.